Well, here's what Sean Spicer said today about this issue, including some of his response to a question about the Trump campaign lawyer's findings that there was no widespread fraud. I think there's a, there's a lot of states that we didn't compete in where that's not necessarily the case. You look at California and New York, I'm not sure that those statements were, we didn't look at those two states in particular. I think we have to understand where the problem exists, how, how deep it goes, and then suggest some remedies to it. But right now, to sort of prejudge the process would sort of get in front of the whole need to have it. What Spicer seems to be saying is that there's no problem with the states Trump won, but states that Clinton won are the ones that might be suspect. Yes? No? Folks, when the President of the United States calls for a major investigation, people usually listen. Hard stop. But what do you do when all the evidence contradicts the need for an investigation? Or is this investigation more of a political exercise to rally Republicans on the issue of voter ID? Join by... Arizona Secretary of State Michelle Reagan, who's a Republican, and Connecticut Secretary of State Denise Merrill, who's a Democrat. She also happens to be the president of the National Association of Secretaries of State. Secretary of State Reagan, let me start with you in Arizona. Um, obviously, there, there is a concern that somehow folks who are not citizens somehow ended up voting. Can you explain how Arizona's procedure works that would prevent something like that from happening? And absolutely, it's a great question. Uh, Arizona's voter registration system is pretty cutting edge in the fact that every time we're registering somebody to vote, we're bouncing it against uh, motor vehicle division to see what their citizenship status is. So uh, we, we're pretty confident in Arizona that we've got a wonderful system. In fact, I believe there's other states that are trying to copy it right now. Uh, and and um, let me, Denise, let me go to you um, on this in Connecticut. Same question to you. What do you, what does your system do in Connecticut that would prevent somebody who's not a citizen um, from you being able to, how, how do you catch those folks? Well, it sounds like we have a similar system to that in Arizona, as do many states. And I should comment that I'm speaking here today as president of a nonpartisan national association. So, uh, you know, my own opinions aside, I would say that uh, our election system in this country is quite secure. And we've been called on, uh, I've been called on personally uh, a lot in the last six months to defend it against uh, allegations of hacking and rigging and all kinds of things. Right. And I think it stood up pretty well. Well, and, and uh, Secretary Jay Merrill, talk larger here for me on, on all the states. Mm -hmm. What kind of cooperation? So for instance, how does Connecticut cooperate with Arizona to double check double rolls? How does it happen from California to New York? Walk me through that process a little bit. Well, it is still a state-by-state -state system. Uh, there are some programs available uh, through foundations and others who have tried to help it across state lines. And uh, But uh, elections are very local in this country, uh, mostly done at the county level. And uh, they are responsible for checking out to make sure people actually live in that jurisdiction. And But there's no way to entirely cross-check the entire national record across the country. So so there are lots of people registered in more than one state. Usually that's handled on election day or just before election day when people re-register. They are asked in most states whether they're registered in another state and that's how that's handled. Secretary Sir Reagan, let me go to something that I remember candidate Donald Trump brought up. He was a big fan of vote by mail. Your state is one that does a lot of early voting, a lot of vote by mail. We Walk certainly me through. do. Walk me through that process. How do you prevent, you know, how, how is your system secure so that, you know, Joe Smith votes, you know, October 30th. Um, and, you and know then that's Joe, really Smith, Joe Smith. Exactly. And that Joe Smith shows up on election day to try to vote. How do you, how does your system stop Joe Smith from voting twice? Well, in Arizona, a lot of people like to vote by mail. And so it's a pretty sophisticated system and it continues to grow every election. But basically, the voter is signing the outside of the envelope if they choose to vote by mail, and that signature is checked sometimes, several times, um, to make sure that that really is the voter. And if there's any questions, the county officials will actually call the voter and ask them. So we've got that uh, pretty well covered. And then in addition to that, Arizona's got um, ID at the polls, voter ID at the polls. And you know, right. this isn't bringing in a long form birth certificate or anything. This is bringing in a photo ID, a couple of pieces of mail 
to prove who you are, and um, that seems to work really well. It's a great safeguard. And the system will also tell you, our e-poll books will tell someone at the polls if someone's already voted. So if they've already sent in a ballot, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, they're going to be alerted when they're at the polls. And Secretary State Merrill, explain, walk me through the process of the transparency aspect uh, after the election. So, because there are a lot of people who've done their own investigating on this. There are a lot of groups that have done investigating. I, I, is it, how transparent are the states and putting up the voter rolls to letting people know who voted and who didn't? Well, it's very transparent in almost every state, and most of the information, both on the voter rolls and uh, in the statement of vote that's after the election, uh, is all published and uh, open to freedom of information rules and everything else. And in fact, most of the time, people get upset when they realize that their voting information is so public. Uh, but you can hear also that every state has an investigatory arm. Uh, if there are allegations of fraud or misbehavior or any kind of activity on election day or any other time, mm -hmm. any citizen in most states can bring a claim of fraud or mm -hmm. misbehavior. And that is investigated usually by a bipartisan commission uh, that is uh, seeks to take it out of the political right. arena. And every state gets it's literally hundreds of complaints on election day and sure. before and after about things they are investigated with great seriousness so there are lots of processes in place and I think the states all of them take right. it very seriously Secretary State Reagan let me ask you specifically how many complaints uh, maybe you know I get it if you can say I, I don't know if it's 403 or 402 but about how many complaints did you get in 2016 um, and how much investigating did you did, and did any of them come? Did any of them prove to be uh, fraud? Well, we always take any allegation that we hear of fraud seriously. So sometimes, whether it's um, substantiated or not, um, the the goal is is to make sure our system is as free from fraud as possible. So that's something we're always going to look into. Um, we hear things during every election that um, different. Uh, some of them are rumors. Some of them may be fact, but. There aren't a lot of convictions of voter fraud, and that's actually a good thing. I like to point to that again. That means the system's working, um, that we have the laws in place to make it as free from fraud as possible. Uh, biggest, uh, can you give me the last time, Secretary of State, Merrill, that there was a, uh, any sort of significant voter fraud uh, that you can come up with? Well. It's, it's a widespread belief in the education, in the election community that voter fraud is extremely rare. Yeah. It's frequently heard and sometimes uh, alleged, rarely proven. And I think I went back 20 years in Connecticut's records to see when this all came up about five or six years ago to see if there really was right. you know, any kind of allegations, unproven or proven. And we came up with one proven case in 20 years and that was without intent in other words it was a student who thought she had the right to vote and she didn't All so right, that's that's pretty typical very quickly secretary state reagan anything can you I, can you think back in arizona's probably, history yeah probably the most notable was just a couple of years ago in 20 during the 2014 election we did have an individual vote in two states knowingly vote in two states and so of course that was sent over to the attorney general's office but we find this stuff out by comparing um, roles with other states that we do collaborate with and so the system works pretty well it will catch people eventually all right secretaries of state michelle reagan and denise merrill thank you both apologize for a little bit of my uh, brain freeze there on, on, on names but uh, i wanted to uh, appreciate you both coming on and spending some time and with I'll, us. I'll see my my secretary in uh, dc oh very good we'll yes, see we you have at, a big convention meeting. coming up and i'm Excellent. sure this will be yes, a topic of discussion you, more people oh, will show will. up i promise all right let me bring in tonight's